Hi, everyone. This is Scott Nybachen for Dynamite Entertainment, and I'm here with legendary comics writer Garth Ennis, uh, the author of the upcoming new series, James Bond 007 from Dynamite. Garth, thanks for help joining us on the channel. Uh, my pleasure, Scott. Thanks for having me. Uh, so first off, I wanted to ask you how it was you came to work on this new Bond series, and was 007 ever on your wish list of characters that you wanted to take a swing at? Um, not until recently, no. I... Um... I, I would watch the movies every few years and they were the kind of things that I enjoyed, but almost as soon as I'd seen them, I started to forget them. Um, I thought of Bond as a character no more than ripe for parody, really. Uh, hence the Jimmy's Bastard series I did with, with Ross Braun. It was when Joe Ryban suggested I take another look at it because uh, he and uh, Nikki had pitched Bond to me before. Um, and I wasn't interested, uh, for no particular reason. I, I, uh, I had a look at a few things. I looked at, uh, Warren Ellis's couple of Bond series. Um, I looked at some of the novels and I could see immediately that Warren had kind of very cleverly updated that character and that setting for the present day, because those, those books are set in the fifties and sixties. And it, I think it was seeing the potential in the character, uh, this the sort of ruthless, actually beyond ruthless, ab absolutely deadly character who um, hides what he does behind this veneer of charm, um, quite a thin veneer sometimes, uh, that, that I began to see possibilities. Yeah, and you grew up in, the, in Northern Ireland, like during uh, the tail end of the Cold War. Um, mm. So I, I'm guessing that that probably gave you something of a unique perspective on the on the James Bond phenomenon, especially from from the films. Uh, did you see a lot of them in the theaters when you were younger? Um, a few. I seem to recall seeing The Spy Who Loved Me and enjoying it being just the right age for that. Um, but I don't I don't think growing up where I did give me any particular insight that that was denied anybody else i mean you could say i suppose that you can see that, that the british establishment is going to be fairly unsentimental about solving its problems solving you know meeting challenges um but on the other hand who doesn't know that and what country doesn't do that yeah um, in, in terms of the movies like i say they were things i i watched and then kind of forgot yeah um, and um, speaking of which, so there's always been like a, like a bit of a distance between the bond of the uh, films and the bond of the original Ian Fleming novels. Um, which version uh, is your 007 like leaning towards for this new story? Uh, very much the novels. Um, yeah, the, the the film bond is different. They they had to tone him down. They had to make him a bit more likable. Now I know that. Even in the old Connery and Moore films, you you see the character do some pretty ruthless stuff. But anyone who's read the novels can tell you it 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 doesn't really come close to what Fleming was doing. Uh, unsurprising, really. I mean, uh, I don't I don't think cinema would really have been ready for that. Um, I'm I'm not sure how unsympathetic a character you can get into a truly big budget movie. And that, of course, is what Bond has to be. Yeah. And, uh, you know, your t your your story is titled uh, Your Cold, Cold Heart, which I think relates to aspects of the plot as well as the, the characters. Um, can you give us a quick summary of the players involved and the situations they find themselves in as the story gets underway? Sure. Um, there's Bond himself, obviously. Uh, I already talked about him. Uh, there's M. This would be the M established uh, in the first Warren Ellis issues, um, and I think maintained in the Dynamite comics ever since. I, I think at one point they had him uh, uh, in in one of the comics, and I've a feeling Declan Shalvey wrote this. He is actually an ex serviceman who's who uh, served in Northern Ireland as a as a young British soldier. Um, so he's obviously be he's obviously run the gamut of British military and secret service um, involvement. Um, the uh, money penny seems very much to be based on the um, 
uh, Naomi Harris character who first popped up in Skyfall. Um, that's a movie I enjoyed actually a little more than most. Um, I thought she was very good, but I thought everyone was very good. And I also thought it was possibly the first time I'd seen Bond fighting for something that mattered to him. Yeah, that's why that one sticks in my head. Anyway, uh, her her performance was very good, and that seems to me to be the uh, the money penny that um, uh, that, that Dynamite have have picked up on. Um, the three of them together, actually, Bond, Money Penny, and M, I I see as being perhaps not as far apart as as th they're normally presented. They're all British Secret Service. They're all highly trained. They're all dedicated to the job. Um, and just because one runs an office and the other one works in an office and the other one's a field agent doesn't mean uh, that M and Moneypenny are going to be significantly less capable than Bond. Uh, so I've got a few situations where, where, where we see them show what they can do, uh, hopefully quite effectively. Excellent. Um and although Bond was always staged against the backdrop of the Cold War in the real world, like his antagonists were often like fairly outlandish individuals who mm. were not necessarily working for either the East or the West and mm. taste ran towards the theatrical uh, without giving too much away. Will there be some of that atmosphere in uh, your cold, cold heart? You know, I don't really have a lot of time for that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, the eye patch, tap stroking smug fat bloke in the chair I, I i think that's been done to death also, also i've noticed that that in the movies actually um every time a new one comes along the bond villain tries to outdo his immediate predecessor but they just but i think that all that happens is they take those characters further and further into the realm of the ridiculous like the, the last few beginning with uh, Javier Bardem, I think, have been this weird, simpering, squeaky-voiced collection of of I'm not sure what. <laughs> uh, but one, one thing I don't find them is scary. Um, so, no, I avoided that end of things completely. Uh, can you tell us a little about the, uh, like, the former double-O agent Archibald T uh, Tyron or Tyron? Right. He's the guy who, back in the day, uh, initiated the operation by uh, stealing uh, what's called the Stalvoda steel water compound um, from Soviet Russia. Bond is quite surprised to learn that this um, this initial operation took place 52 years ago. Um, so clearly, once things go wrong and he senses uh, a, a hand behind uh, some of the uh, some of the problems he realizes someone's been playing a very long game indeed uh archibald tryon of course by this stage is well into his 80s now he's not a doddering fool but he's not a, he's not anywhere near capable of uh james bond or double o department uh activity anymore so he's really just a source of information for bond and uh he, he has an interesting perspective on things i think born of born of a, a lifetime in the secret service uh, some of the things that Bond will find out about Tryon as the story progresses will be quite pertinent too. Oh, excellent. Um, and uh, as you said, like your Bond like takes a lot more inspiration from the Ian Fleming novels. Um, but of course, this is a comic book story, so there has to be a specific look and uh, for the art. Uh, what mm -hmm. sort of direction did you give the artist uh, uh, Rafa Lebosco for drawing the character? Well, not much because he already had some experience with Bond. He'd drawn him before, so it was really just a matter of him slotting his his character into my story. I was perfectly happy with uh, with his take on Bond. Um, I uh, no, I, I really haven't had to alter my approach for for Rafa at all. I, I write the scripts as I would for any other artist. And are are you happy with the results so far? Oh, very much. Uh, he's. He's my kind of artist. Um, I sometimes use the phrase nuts and bolts, but that basic understanding of storytelling, uh, that facility with character, uh, good faces. Um, these Give me someone like that, and generally I'll be happy. 
Uh, and finally, um, over the years, you've crafted like some of the most uh, successful franchises in comics history, titles like The Boys, Preacher, Hellblazer, The Punisher, the list goes on and on. Um, but your war stories may be a little uh, less well known, but I know they're a particular favorite of yours to write. Um, how much overlap do you see between the like the war and the espionage genres? And uh, how do you think this has informed your new series? Um I would still see them as being slightly separate. Um, people like to think about um, uh, when it comes to war stories uh, and espionage. They like they like to think in terms of what Ca Quentin Tarantino called the guys on a mission story, the little team of highly skilled individuals, or or maybe just one guy like Bond. Uh, on a do or die mission that will affect the course of the war. But of course, if you know anything about the realities of either uh, espionage or conventional warfare, you'll know that uh, one has actually quite a limited effect on the other. If you look at the Second World War, for instance, uh, the, the, the conflict was essentially decided on the battlefield and any cloak and dagger stuff um with spies and double agents and so on while it's a fascinating story didn't have as big an overall effect on things as people like to think it it, it does go back to that one man can make a difference thing one little group of heroes can make a difference uh it's it's a popular idea and you, you can see how it translates to comics of course which are full of teams but really it's it's not one i would tend to push uh again in the Second World War, the um, the the big effect that intelligence had actually came from signals intercepts and decryption and code breaking, yeah. Enigma and so on, and the ultra intelligence that that was gleaned from it. Um, that had a far bigger effect in this context than anyone skulking around stealing secret documents, that kind of thing. So yes, that those are two dots I would tend not to be in any hurry to join mm -hmm. well i think we're all we're all looking forward to seeing uh like uh where the story goes um and thanks for finally picking up the proverbial walter ppk and giving us a, a preview of uh, your cold cold heart uh so everyone uh, look for the first issue of james bond 007 in comic shops in january and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons thanks for watching <laughs>